If you bought or are considering buying the DZO film uh, cine lenses, you will need to add or remove shims to the lens the first time you use them. Prior to buying the DZO lenses, I was worried it would be too technical and almost passed on them. Uh, if you're in the same boat, I made this quick video to answer some questions. If you have the DZO film lenses and a Canon C300 Mark III and want the quick answer to how many shims to add, the answer is six shims that add up to 0.53. I'll put a uh, still on the screen with the combination I use. If you wanna know more, I'll walk you through the steps. Before you begin doing anything, you must have a notepad and a pen next to you. Also, before you begin, go ahead and watch the manufacturer video on YouTube from DZO Film where it explains the concept. It's only about a minute and 14 seconds long. Watch it and have it handy when you open the lenses for the first time. I'll put it in the link uh, in the comments below. No, you do not need to be great at math and you do not need to be a whiz with camera equipment to do this. When you get your lenses, just bring up this video and the DZO YouTube video on your computer for quick reference. Let me also say that if you have an external monitor that has peaking to show when you're in focus perfectly, it can be very helpful. Um, also, a camera with a magnifier is handy for focusing. Okay. You've watched the manufacturer video, you have a pen and paper ready. Now, uh, step one is to print off a Siemens star chart and tape it to a wall. Set up your camera tripod about four feet, nine inches away from the Siemens star taped to the wall. You can be approximate with how far you are from the chart. For the next step, Go ahead and take your lens out, find the long screws, the included mini screwdriver, and one of the tins that actually holds the shims. Be careful when you handle the shims not to break or bend them. Some of them are thinner than paper. Take a quick inventory of the shims and write down what individual shims you have on hand. The lenses also come with several shims already on them. Take these preloaded shims off of the lens and add them to your inventory list. Once all the shims are removed and you have written down your inventory, you are going to start. Your lens has no shims on it, so go ahead and decide how many shims you want to put on the lens for your first try. Just choose a number, maybe four shims, a couple 0.1 and a 0.02 and a 0.05. They're all different thicknesses, so take notes as to how many shims and what thickness you add or remove each time. Once you've added some shims, go ahead and screw the lens back together. Put the lens on your camera. Now turn your camera on, make sure your iris is wide open to 2.8 and focus on the Siemens star chart. I'd never used one of these, but it's a nifty little graphic. As you start to focus on the chart, you'll see the lines blur and unblur and even look like they're changing color at times. Once you see four little arrows or stars appear on each side of the circle, uh, you'll know you're in focus. Uh, it creates sort of a north, south, east west star around the circle so um, if you're having trouble making these stars appear um, try adjusting the focus a little bit slower when the lens is just about in focus those little arrows stars will appear or if you have focus peaking just use that to get the best focus look at the numbers on the right side of your lens and get ready to write them down on the focus ring there are several numbers with hash marks or tick marks. The number might not line up exactly to a tick mark, 
but just write down whichever number is closest. Again, this is on your focus ring as they show in the DZO film video on YouTube. Also watch the DZO film on YouTube that shows the formula they use. The number that lines up with the tick mark on the focus ring is what DZO refers to as S1. So write that down. Next, zoom the lens out, making sure you don't accidentally uh, adjust your focus ring. Once you're zoomed out, look at the image. It will probably be out of focus. This means you'll need to add or remove some shims. It's not a difficult task, it's just a little tedious because you'll need to unscrew seven screws each time you do this and then screw it all back together. So, okay, now that you've zoomed out and you can see the lens is not in focus, go ahead and turn the manual focus to put the Siemens star chart back in proper focus. Again, you can look for the little magical arrows or, or stars that appear once you have uh, focus set. Um, or again, you can use the focus peaking or even your camera's magnification to put in proper focus. Once you've refocused on the zoomed out image, write down the focus number that lines up with that little tick mark on the lens. This number will be S2 according to the DZO YouTube video formula. So S1 is the number on the focus ring when it's zoomed in, and S2 is the number on the focus ring when you are zoomed out. The goal is to get S1 and S2 to be the same. This means that the focus will stay the same zoomed in or zoomed out. Adding additional shims or removing them will make the lens parfocal. So at this point, you have zoomed in, written down the number, uh, then zoomed out and written down the number. Now go ahead and add another shim of any size, maybe even two. Uh, just make sure you write down what you add, then screw it all back together and do the same thing you just did the first time. Zoom completely in, focus perfectly on the chart, zoom out and see if the chart is still in focus. It probably won't be the second time. Write down the number that matches up with the tick mark when it's zoomed in and write down the number that matches up with the tick mark when you zoomed out. Again, those numbers are written down as your S1 and S2. Write them right under your previous numbers so you can see if your focusing range is getting smaller or bigger. Look at the uh, distance between the two numbers. Did it shrink? If it did, you're heading in the right direction. So if you added a shim, then you can keep adding. So if you are considering buying these lenses, take the difficulty of installing them off your worry list. It was pretty simple. It was just a little tedious. This video is not meant to be a review, but I will share a comparison video on my channel to see what you think of the DZO 20 to 55 millimeter cine lens compared to the Sigma 15 to 35 still lens. If you buy these lenses and you happen to have a different Canon camera or a RED or any other brand, please leave a comment as to what shims you used to attach your DZO film lenses. This video is just to help ease the anxiety for first timers like me about how easy the process actually was and I learned something. So I hope this was helpful. We'll see you soon.